Welcome back to Mastering C++ 20 Features. In the last lecture, we took a closer look at the requires clause and its usage to constrain the template parameters in a generic function. We saw how the requires clause can appear both before and after the function declaration. And in both the cases, the expressions appearing after the requires clause has to be a constant Boolean expression, as is the case for most of the type traits expressions in the C++ standard type traits library. The C++20 standard also provides a set of expressions in the concepts library and along with the type traits library, we can make use of them to formulate the constraints for the template parameters. But in some cases, they might not be sufficient and we may need to formulate our own constraint expression. In this lecture, we will look at how to formulate our own requires expression. Like before, the requires expression is also a predicate used during compilation to check if the conditions on the given template parameters are satisfied or not. Once again, in the last lecture, we saw the requires clause of the form or we also saw the trailing requires clause where the requires some constant expression appeared after the function declaration. Now, if we want to define our own expression, we need to use a requires expression. That is, some constant expression has to be converted into a requires expression. Requires expression has the following syntax. A requires keyword followed by an optional parameter list, like in the case of function declaration, that possibly makes use of the template parameters and the template types which we want to constrain, followed by the body of the expression in which we can lay out one or more requirements. Each requirement has to be followed by a semicolon. Like I mentioned before, most of the time the optional parameters refer to the template parameters that we want to constrain. To use a requires expression, we need to make use of a named concept. Syntax for a named concept is as follows. The template type name token for each of the template parameters, just like in the case of generic function, followed by in the next line the keyword concept, the name of the concept, in this case some name, followed by equals to sign and then the requires expression. The syntax for the requires expression we already saw in the previous slide. Another usage of requires expression is combining it with the requires clause. For example, here the first requires keyword represents the requires clause and then the second requires keyword followed by the parameter and the body represents the requires expression. After writing the parameter, we define the body of the requires expression where we place constraints on the template parameters and then in the end, we define the function which in this slide is simply foo. Alright, now let's take a look at some coding examples and let me switch to my code editor. This is the same code as from the previous lecture where I constrained add one function and had two overloads. One that worked only with the arithmetic types, which is this one, and another one that worked only with the pointer types and made use of the arithmetic type internally. Let's comment out the calls to the overload with the pointer types in the main. I have a reason for this, but I'll show you why later. Now, let's convert the required clause in the first overload to a requires expression. This function. This can be done by simply replacing the type traits expression with a requires expression as shown in the slide. Let me type this out. Here, I'll first copy this expression. This requires keyword represents the part related to requires clause. And second requires keyword will represent the requires expression. Here I type out requires and then the optional parameter list. I'll name the parameter as param. It has the same type as that of the template type in the body of the function. And then the body of the requires expression. In the requires expressions body, I'll simply use the same type traits expression. 
if I compile this code, it works as expected. Adding one to one results in two. Adding one to two results in three. However, just for the sake of variation, I want to type some more requirements. The one that I defined is sufficient, but I want to show you other ways in which requirements can be added. For example, one could add requirements that type T should not be a Boolean type. This can be done as follows. In the body of the requires expression, I can negate the type rate STD is same. Bool and T. So this expression says that T should not be same as Boolean or Boolean should not be same as T. Next, I can also place a requirement that the result of param plus one should be something that the compiler can convert to a type that matches T. This can be done by the following type trait expression. STD is convertible. Then I can say decl type param plus one and T. Same can be achieved by using STD is same type trait, but this is another variation. If I compile the code, let me save this and compile and run the code once more. I forgot to add underscore V. Now it should work fine. Yeah. Now I'll uncomment the calls to the add one with the addresses of variable two and pointer to two. If I compile the code at this point, there will be some compilation error. Let me show you. This error is due to the fact that compiler cannot resolve the calls to the overloads of add one, which can be seen from this error. It finds both the overloads as a candidate for the generation of add one code with template, which is addressed to int and a pointer to the integer. This can be easily fixed by short circuiting the constraint on the first overload to not evaluate the body of the requires expression by adding a requires clause that type T should not be a pointer type and chain it with the rest of the requires expression. Let me show you how. For example, I can copy this from the second overload, put it here, negate std is pointer v and chain it with the rest of the requires clause. I have to add bracket around this. Now if I compile the code, it works as expected. Now if I convert the second overloads requires clause to a requires expression, I will get the same compilation error. Let me show you how. So this is the second overload. And here I want to use requires expression. I'll remove the requires clause expression and add a requires expression. And since the parameter list is optional, I'll not use it for this time. And simply open the curly braces and fill in the body with the type traits expression. And if I compile the code once more, I get the same compilation error as previously. This error is due to the fact that when there are two constrained expressions for a generic function, the compiler cannot decide which overload to resolve. This overload error can be resolved by using name concept, which I will show you in the next lecture. So stay tuned and keep learning modern C++. Thank you. Hello there. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or if you would like to start a discussion on the topic covered in this lecture, please feel free to leave a comment on this video. And lastly, if you are interested to learn more about my courses, then log on to my course website, mastering-modern-cpp-features.thinkific.com. Thank you.